Do you have pain in the front of your shoulder when lifting weights or reaching your arm in certain directions? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to manage this issue, which is often referred to as biceps tendonitis or biceps tendinopathy. The biceps brachii consists of two heads, a short head and a long head. The short head originates at the coracoid process of the scapula or shoulder blade, while the long head originates at the supraglenoid tubercle of the shoulder blade. These two heads come together to attach to the radial tuberosity of the forearm. Since the biceps brachii crosses the elbow and the shoulder, it is expected to have actions at both joints. At the elbow and forearm, the biceps brachii contributes to flexion, bending the elbow, and supination, turning the palm up toward the ceiling. Surprisingly, even in 2024, the exact function of the biceps brachii at the shoulder remains controversial. It likely plays a small role in shoulder flexion, but only when the shoulder is extended and up to about 30 degrees of shoulder flexion. It may also act as a secondary stabilizer of the shoulder due to the path and attachment of the long head of the biceps tendon. Pain in the front of the shoulder is often attributed to the long head of the biceps tendon based on its location. This biceps tendon pain is typically called biceps tendonitis, but inflammation is likely not the primary driver of symptoms. For example, a paper by Strait et al. in 2015 states the following, anterior shoulder pain attributed to the biceps tendon does not appear to be due to an inflammatory process in most cases. Therefore, biceps tendinopathy is the preferred terminology which just refers to pain and impaired function secondary to gradual overload of the tendon. Despite this information, it is difficult to isolate the long head of the biceps tendon as the sole culprit of anterior shoulder pain for two main reasons. One, research demonstrates that clinical examination procedures such as palpation and special tests are not reliable for accurately diagnosing the condition. Two, Research using imaging, such as MRIs, overwhelmingly demonstrates that biceps tendon issues rarely happen in isolation. For instance, simultaneous rotator cuff pathology is common. So who is this video for? As long as symptoms aren't related to frozen shoulder, osteoarthritis, or another condition that may require specific medical management, this video is for individuals with non-traumatic pain in the front of their shoulder that is worsened with loading of the long head of the biceps tendon. Examples usually include activities and exercises that stretch and load the tendon, such as reaching behind your back, the bottom of a bench press, triceps dips, pec flies, and even barbell back squats. If you're worried about a slap tear, check out our video on the topic. If you're worried about impingement, it's a diagnosis that we're moving away from in the rehab and medical world but you can also check out our video on the topic. The management of biceps tendinopathy is a simple two-step process. Simple, but not necessarily easy. Step one involves modifying aggravating exercises and activities to calm symptoms down, especially early on when things may be more irritable or severe. When it comes to tendon rehab, there are four main variables you want to adjust. Volume, which is the total amount of work you're doing in a given day, week or month, range of motion to minimize or avoid provocative positions such as end range shoulder extension, speed as quicker movements typically load tendons more, plus slower movements allow for better control and feedback, and intensity which is alluding to how heavy or hard something is. When it comes to gym exercises, pressing movements are generally the most problematic. For a barbell bench press or a flat dumbbell press, you can consciously reduce the range of motion, use a physical block, such as safety spotter arms to reduce the range of motion, or do something like a floor press. Alternatively, you might swap the movement out for a push-up and modify that range of motion as needed. Triceps dips and regular dips can be aggravating, especially for new trainees, because they require more shoulder extension range of motion than we typically use in our day-to-day -day lives. Dumbbell flies, cable flies, and pec machines may also need to be modified. If overhead pressing with a barbell is an issue, you probably don't want to bring the bar all the way down to your shoulders. You can also swap out the exercise for a dumbbell overhead press with your arms further out in front of you 
so you don't have to use as much shoulder range of motion. For any pressing exercises, you should obviously decrease the weight as needed. I also mentioned that slowing exercises down can be helpful. You can try a slow tempo, particularly during the eccentric portion of an exercise, or use pauses at the bottom of a movement. Changes to your technique can be useful for pulling movements as well. If you're doing a dumbbell row, focus on engaging your back and shoulder blade and stopping the movement when your arm is in line with your trunk. If pull-ups are an issue, try chin-ups or use a neutral grip. Barbell back squats may also need to be modified. You can use a wider grip, a thumbless grip where your thumbs aren't wrapped around the bar, or choose a different leg exercise altogether. Once again, the idea is that you're minimizing the time spent in these aggravating positions and modifying your volume and intensity so that you can recover and adapt from your training appropriately. All of this information applies to throwing, reaching behind your back, daily chores, and any other movements that may be irritating your shoulder. In some cases, you will have to temporarily stop an activity altogether in order to move forward in your rehab. Once you've managed to calm your symptoms down to a reasonable level, step two is pretty basic. It requires gradually progressing back to your normal function over time. If you had to modify any of the variables that I mentioned above, you just slowly reintroduce them into your routine and make adjustments if you have any flare-ups along the way. Regain your range of motion first and then add intensity, volume, and speed as needed. That's it. It's not a perfect science and ups and downs will happen, but many people could end the video right here and be okay if they just apply these principles. Since biceps tendinopathy rarely happens in isolation and the long head of the biceps tendon may act as a secondary stabilizer of the shoulder, you can try to strengthen the surrounding muscles for additional support. One category of exercises that can be performed involves shoulder external rotation strengthening which is often associated with the rotator cuff. Examples include sideline external rotation, standing external rotation with a cable or band, and external rotation with your elbow on your knee. Pick one option to perform slowly within tolerable symptoms for two to three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions, two to three times per week. External rotation strengthening can also be done isometrically by just pulling a band apart and holding this position for 30 to 45 seconds. Your arms can be at your side, at shoulder height, or you can move back and forth between the two. The second category is posterior shoulder strengthening in the form of A's, T's, and Y's with or without resistance. These can be done isometrically on the floor or through a full range of motion on an elevated surface. Once again, pick one for two to three sets of 10 to 15 repetitions or 30 to 45 second holds two to three times per week. Since most of these exercises shouldn't load the biceps tendon much, they likely can be performed at the same time that you're modifying aggravating activities. On the other hand, exercises that purposely load the biceps tendon should only be performed when symptoms are at a much more reasonable level and only if they are necessary for your goals. For elbow flexion, you'll want to start with your shoulder in a flexed position preferably supported. Two examples are preacher curls and one-arm dumbbell curls over an inclined bench. Spider curls are another option, but they are unsupported. From there, you'd progress to curls with your arms down by your side. The last options would involve curls with your shoulders extended, such as dumbbell curls while seated on an inclined bench or cable curls. For shoulder flexion, the emphasis should be on the stretched position of the long head of the biceps tendon, starting with a light load. These front raises can also be done while seated on an inclined bench with dumbbells or while standing with cables. For any of these movements, two to three sets of eight to 15 repetitions, two to three times per week is a safe starting point. Keep them slow and controlled, tolerable, and work on very gradual progressions over several months. Proper rehab and long-term changes take time and consistency. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave any comments down below. Peace.